everyone, I'm Becky and I'm about to show you how easy baking can be. So today I'm going to show you how to make a really delicious, moist and fudgy chocolate cake. And if you've thought, you know, you've never made a chocolate cake before, or you thought it's difficult or you can't, honestly, you're wrong and I'm going to prove it to you. It's easy as anything and it's really fun and it's really delicious and yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do today. As well as the ingredients all being things that you probably have in your cupboard, the techniques involved in this are just super simple. I mean, it's just a case of mixing ingredients in a bowl. And you can do this with an electric mixer or by hand. So whatever you've got, I'm pretty sure you can make this cake right now. Right, so I'm going to put the full recipe in the description below. So like this video and let's get baking. Okay, so before I start making the cake mixture, the fun bit, we need to do all the preparation. So firstly, preheat your oven to 160 degrees C fan or 180 degrees C. Um, and then also you wanna prepare your tins. So I've got two 20 centimeter circular tins here. They haven't got a loose bottom. They've got a firm bottom, which is important for this cake. You don't want a loose bottom tin. Um, and I've also put some non-stick baking paper in the base of each of these. And the reason I like to do this early is because you don't want to do this after you've made your cake mixture. You want to get your cake mixture straight in the oven because it will rise the best and it will just be the best, basically. Um, so yeah, make sure this is all done beforehand. It's kind of the boring bit, but it's good to get the boring bit out of the way. And then we can start making the cake. I've got my dry ingredients here. So in this bowl, I've got some cocoa powder and some plain flour. Mine's gluten-free plain flour. And then I've also got some bicarbonate of soda and some baking powder. Now I'm just putting these all together. I'm sifting them in because cocoa powder especially gets really, really lumpy. So always, always, always use a sieve when you are working with cocoa powder. It's just the best thing to do. And then obviously I'm just gonna sieve this in as well. So I just mix this all together and I'll put it to one side. Okay, so I made a little mistake. Not really a mistake, but I forgot my other ingredient that needs to be mixed into the dry ones, and this is sugar. Sugar isn't always classed as a dry ingredient, even though it definitely is. But yeah, mix your sugar in at this point. So just pour it in, you don't need to sieve sugar. And you probably should have a slightly bigger bowl, but we're not gonna add anything else to this bowl. This bowl is just gonna be like added to a larger bowl with the wet stuff in. So yeah, just mix this around a little bit. It doesn't really matter too much. And then we'll put it to one side. So with this chocolate cake recipe, remember to put the sugar in with your dry ingredients or, well, it won't be the same. Don't be forgetful like me. There we go. Okay, so now I've got a large bowl because this bowl is gonna have the whole cake mixture in at the end. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna add all my wet ingredients. So yeah, I'll mix these until they're thoroughly combined. It doesn't take particularly long because there isn't any dry ingredients to combine and mix in. Um, but just make sure that it all looks kind of the same. You can't see like the egg yolks or any uh, any like separate ingredients as it were. Um, so yeah. So that all looks nicely mixed. I'm now gonna add, if you remember, our dry ingredients. I'm gonna add this gradually and mix as I'm sort of adding it. So gradually add a bit, then mix it add some more, mix it so that you can see that it's all combined because this is quite a lot of dry ingredient and you don't want to sort of lose some and get those dry pockets of flour, which if you add too much at once, you'll definitely get that. At this stage, the cake mixture looks absolutely perfect. It looks like your ideal sort of what you imagine when you think of cake mixture, but it's nowhere near done. We've got one more big ingredient. Today it is for me just boiling water. Sometimes I also add a little bit of coffee to this so just like a teaspoon of coffee in there but today I can't find my coffee. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I'm not a coffee drinker so it's somewhere in the back of a cupboard um, but using hot water does exactly the same thing. You just won't get that I guess enhancement of flavour but to be fair it tastes incredible just with hot water. It will become really runny and you'll kind of be slightly worried that it's too runny but trust me it's not that is one of the main reasons why you must make sure that your tin doesn't have a loose bottom because if it does it would leak through i mean at this stage it looks like what have i done i've ruined it right but i haven't so now just put this in mix it until it's well not for very long but just until it's combined and then you'll see that it will look slightly better but just a lot thinner 
Now the mixture is much thinner now. Almost seems a bit like liquidy. It is liquidy. So I've got my two tins. One and two. And I want to evenly put it between them. Also, one other thing, make sure that you really have mixed all the way to the bottom because you don't want to be pouring this in and then when you get halfway through, you realize there's lots of thickness at the bottom. You want it to be even throughout. And sometimes you suddenly look at the bottom of your bowl and you'll find that there's dry bits and that is definitely not what you want. So make sure it's completely mixed through. So my cake tins now have pretty much the same amount of mixture in each. Looks lovely and glossy. You can even see my reflection of my hand on top, which is very cool. Hello. <laughs> um, so these now need to go straight into the oven. And yeah, they'll go in for around 25 to 30 minutes. So yeah, I need to get these in sharpish. So one thing that I quite like doing is whilst the cake's in the oven, I like to make my buttercream. I never get around to finishing it and I'm pretty sure the cake's gonna come out before I finish making this but let's get started. So I have got some butter in here. This is softened butter. It's not really, um, but it's just soft. So it's soft to touch. So you can press into it, but it's not super greasy. So what I'm gonna do to start with is I'm gonna mix this completely on its own. As you can see, it's really quite yellow at the moment. We're gonna whisk it up or mix it around for even up to a good like five minutes until it's nice and pale in color. There you go, that's really, like obviously it's broken down a lot more than it was. It was lumps of butter before and it's a lot whiter in color, it's fluffy. Okay, so I'm gonna add the icing sugar in stages. So probably in two stages because there's not too much icing sugar. And then mix it all in and probably for about two or three minutes, mix that in before you add the next lot because you want it really combined. You wanna get, you don't want it just to be sugary butter you want it to be buttercream. Okay, so next up, gonna add the cocoa powder and mix it just like I did with the icing sugar. Make sure it's all combined because obviously this is where we're gonna get a lot of the color. So put that all in. Okay, so last but not least, just gonna add my chocolate. So I'm gonna pour it in, mix it really thoroughly, and then we'll have beautiful, fudgy, delicious, like one of my favorite chocolate icings, frostings, buttercreams, whatever you want to call it, that there is in existence. It's really, really good. And it works perfectly with this cake. So there we go. That's the buttercream all lovely and done. It's so nice and smooth and fudgy. And I like to mix it just at the end, just to make sure that I have, you know, mix it by hand, just to make sure that the electric mixer did its job. Look at that, really nice. It tastes so, so good. Um, so I'm just gonna put this to one side now whilst the cake is still cooling a little bit and then we can assemble. So these are now completely cooked through, looking amazing. So we just need to let them cool slightly in the tin and then we'll take them out to finish cooling completely on a cooling rack. Right, so cakes have cooled and they are looking amazing and chocolatey and just everything that you want in a chocolate cake. So I've let them cool on a cooling rack and then I'm going to put them onto wherever I'm gonna serve it from, which is my, oops, my cake stand. And I've got my icing ready. So now it's just time to construct and you don't have to be like an amazing cake decorator to make a cake look nice, especially a chocolate fudge cake. It can look messy, it's completely fine. I am not a really good cake decorator by any standard. Like I'm not an arty person, I'm not that creative, but I can shove a bit of icing on, spread it all around, put another cake on top and spread some more and it tastes good and that's all that matters. So I'll show you what I'm doing, but honestly, don't be scared of decorating cakes. It's really easy, I promise. How did I manage that? And voila, this is the cake. And now the only thing left to do in the whole wide world is to grab a plate, grab a sharp knife, slice a slice of cake and sit down and eat it. So now that you've nailed chocolate cake, you definitely need to nail your next bake. So click up here 
for another beginner friendly bake and I'll see you in that video. Bye!